Um, just how many how many vlogs is this now? Eight. I like the way you had to count that on your hands before you did it. I'm a recruiter, mate. You know what I mean? I'm not the most intelligent person in the world. <laughs> so we're on vlog eight, mate. Still working from home. Popping into the office now and again on the odd occasion. Um, loads to talk about, but we've got to condense it. What are we? What, how long have we got? Five minutes. I better press start. Timer on? Five. Right, press start on the timer. Brilliant. Okay. So... Carl, over to you, mate. What uh, what are you noticing this week or the last couple of weeks? Good question. Good, good question. And Jack. then I'll tell you what I've noticed. Yeah, yeah good work. <laughs> so I think for me, I mean, the market is definitely picking up more and more momentum. I think, like I said in the last one, August, best, best month of the year. September, best month of the year again and, and best month since we've started the business, which is brilliant to see. Job flow through October, again, is gaining momentum. Um, but I think one of the the, the, the big things. But hold, can I stop? Can I stop? Can, can I stop you there? Why? Why is that? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Good question. I think some of it is. I think if we're looking at probably some of the businesses we're working with are different. Um, I think probably if you looked at it pre-COVID, we were working with much probably larger sort of mid-cap and even some FTSE listed businesses. Whereas now, I think probably a lot of our clientele is probably more either in that startup space or in that scaling space. Um, and we're working a lot more with sort of tech specific and, and SaaS specific businesses. Um, and those, those individuals seem to be sort of growing really well at the moment. Whereas a number of the larger sort of mid cap and FTSE businesses are still in that holding pattern at the moment. So I guess they've got enough resource internally to play, play around with people or lean on sort of their, their sort of SIs or sort of, MSPs a lot more, shall we say, than, than what a startup or a, a scaling business can do. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that. And I think for some of the smarter businesses out there realise there there is definitely still a, a, a war on talent. There, I use the phrase. I think so. We've seen a, a bit of an uplift in and and an appreciation of our, our live podcast with some some businesses that are coming down the line, some interviews. Uh, some discussions around what these startups are doing. And I, I think for them, it's definitely a, a great story to tell, but also it really does and hopefully will elevate their proposition in the local market to say, Do you know what, that, that's a great company. That, that is one I want to watch and see and see what happens with them. And, you know, who knows, there's, there's, I know there's something you're going to allude to shortly, I'm sure, but there, there is still the passive work searcher to go after those those people that are kind of not really thinking about a move at the moment because they're maybe still worried and still thinking oh, I don't, I really, it's really now the time to look and i think um we've seen that from our ad responses and, and you were just alluding to the fact that you've seen quite an uplift in ad responses across you know people applying for everything still well, I, think, I think that's still the challenge isn't it i mean we've got a couple of roles I mean, we've got a, an infrastructure contract infrastructure engineer role normally you'd think you pop an advert up for that and you get quite a good response similarly we've got a product owner role at the moment in central bristol again you think you put an ad up for that and normally you'd expect to see especially over the last few months a fairly healthy response and don't right. get me wrong the numbers have been really good in terms of the volume of applications but the, the quality of those has not been what the client's wanting. Um, so actually, every candidate we've got in the process for the roles we're working on at the moment are those passive candidates because I think they are a little bit more confident in making a move now because, like I said, the, the tech sector really is picking up momentum again. And as, as we, I think we put in one of our blog posts out the other week that the technology sector is the second fastest growing job market, if you'd like, outside of um, nurses, doctors, so, which I think is, is, a, is a great stat to, to have for our sector. So I think that's really interesting. It ties back into your point. I think month, two months ago, three months ago, yeah, clients stuck an advert up. They've got a great caliber of candidate applying and they, 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 they could do it directly. Whereas I think, again, it is really shifted almost back to where it was pre-COVID, where actually clients need to be thinking much more about than just popping an advert up on indeed and they get a great response as we were talking about sort of employer branding the employer sort of value proposition and as we mentioned in the other vlogs employers need to be really good at 
talking through the financial position and the security of their organization because i think that's absolutely critical for candidates making a decision and i think the one thing that we're really seeing and it's an obvious thing but i think it's worthwhile mentioning is the flexible working part i don't think any candidate wants 100 percent remotely from home some do but i don't think most do i think most want a blended model but working for a company that's happy to be flexible around that dependent on what's happening out there um, and i think the companies are going well no four days in the office one day from home and, and that's us moving a lot to go to that model candidates are like oh, i'm not sure if i feel comfortable with that so i think again employers really need to get their head around what that's going to look like because i think personally that's probably here to stay for for the foreseeable but it's very difficult for companies to just put a direct ad out and expect, you know, a quality to come back because they don't know the proposition. They don't know what the company is offering and, and certainly what, why the role has become available really in depth and to get under the skin of a, an organisation. So I think our passive candidates, people that are in our network, are really spending a bit of time thinking about the company, doing, you know, so, so much so, you know, going on to company's house, looking at credit, checking them. There's all kinds of things that people should and, and would do around thinking, you know, I want to know more about the company just just other than, than an advert that's come out. Um, and I, you know, we're, we're, a, we're, we're kind of very lucky to, to partner with some organisations that are really prepared to spend the time to talk to you and I and our team around... What else do you guys, Carl, what else do you want to know? Jab, what else do you want to know about this? Is there anything else that the market wants to know, you, Phil, may want to know about us before we go, we go and find the right candidate? Yeah. And it, it is very typical. I think that the candidates are becoming a lot more savvy around well, I think it's understandable, who they I mean, want to work a, with. Yeah. And if a candidate, uh, me as a recruiter, wasn't asking me those questions... I'd be wondering sort of how motivated are they? How serious are they about wanting to join this business? Because it, it's a big decision to drop ship at the moment. And I think that's where sort of a really good <clears throat> sort of recruitment partner from a client perspective can add a lot of value because they should mm -hmm. be telling you and, and really sort of gleaning all of that information from you as a company to be able to present your opportunity in, in the best possible light. And I think maybe that's where I'm running out of time, but I think almost that's where sort of our products, if you'd like, from sort of the Parlay product, where we sort of embed ourselves with the client, we spread the cost over hiring over 12 months, is growing some real popularity because it's not just then a transactional relationship. We're there for the, the, that period of time to do reviews, make sure the candidate's happy, make sure the client's happy, and be able to then help the client, if you'd like, from their longer term hiring strategy as well. Um, and I think mm -hmm. I mean, we can talk about that in another vlog in a bit more detail, but I think I think we're going to start seeing more of those types of relationships coming out and, and being really beneficial. Um, and then yeah, being a, being a recruitment partner, isn't it? And, and really getting, almost being on site and being available at any time to talk about any forward thing, you know, thinking about opportunities that are coming up and, and, and market mapping and doing all that. And that's what you, I guess that's what you get from that fee rather yeah. than just paying that one off. You've, you've made a you've placement invoice done. It, it's about, you know, adding that service throughout those payments. Yeah. And I think so it's, a, it's a good idea. Yeah, it gives the candidate a much better experience because we can tell them everything there is to know about the company. And, and when we're going to tap people on the shoulder, because like we all know passive candidates are the best candidates, we can, we can position it really well. So you will get that candidate that you really want. Um, but I think, like I said, we're, we're seeing that grow. So I think that'd be interesting to watch as time goes on. And then more importantly, mate, I think the most interesting, best thing of all is going to be our, uh, our new picture we got. You uh, and your little tiny bit on your head, mate. I think it's going to be great. People are going to love so, it. So you've taken it upon yourself to put, get an art, commission an artist to put a caricature of you and I on these vlogs. Yeah. Mine's off you, you a couple of stone off me, giving me a better beard, so I look great. Whereas yours is, <laughs> is a little bit ropey. Well, I think I think maybe we'll we'll take a we'll we'll, we'll take the opinion of people that have actually get to see the caricatures to see how how closely matched they really are. <laughs> Mate, brilliant. On to the next one.